At this point, we know how to work with dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. Now let's deal with one complex scenario. As you already know that we are using this interface iProductRepository and we have implemented this interface in this product repository. Now let's add one more method over here. Let's keep it very simple. So let's say I'm writing a string and simply get name. That's it. Now we have to implement this method in this product repository. There we go. We got the name. And now just for the learning purpose, let's return some hard coded data. Now let's assume that you are dealing with the complex project. And in that project, there are possibilities that you might have to implement the same interface in multiple classes. So for example, let's add one more repository in this application. Let's give it any meaningful name. Let's say I'm writing test repository. Hit the add button. And in the second repository, we have to implement the same interface. Let's copy the name of the interface. Go back to the test repository. And over here, let's use this interface. Let's implement all of them. Now, since for the learning purpose, we have to deal with this get name method. So I am going to write some code in this third method. Let's return some code from here. Just like we have done in the product repository, I am going to return some hard code data from here also. So the text was name from product repository. And here I can write name from test repository. That's it. Now let's go back to our controller class. Let's open this product controller. And here at the bottom side, let's use one more method. Let's use the HTTP get method over here. Remove everything from the parameters. We can use this get name method and we can return this data in this OK method. As of now, in this application, we have created two repositories and both the repositories are implementing the same interface. Now let's open the startup class. In the startup class, you can notice that we have defined this code like this IE product repository will be implemented by this product repository. Now let's assume that I have to use this test repository in my application. For that, I have to write the same code over here. So this time, this IE product repository will be implemented by this test repository. Now you can see that we have written the code twice that this interface is implemented by two different repositories. Now let's go back to the controller class. In the controller class, we do not know about the implementation of this interface. We only know the interface. Run this application by pressing the screen button. The application is running. Now let's open the postman. And over here in the URL, let's use API, then product. And since we have defined the method as HTTP GET, so we can use the GET method from this drop down and remove everything from this body and simply send the data. Let's see what we got over here. We got the data from test repository. Let's understand the behavior of this registration. We have defined the same interface multiple times. Now what will happen? The second registration of the service will always override the first one. If we will change the order of this registration, like this run this application again let's send the data and here you can see in the output window that this time we are getting the data from product repository now let's assume that you are working on an application and you have to implement a new functionality now what you do you use the same interface you create a new repository and you simply register that service over here in this application your code is working fine because you have written the line at the last of the registration but the problem is that the first registration of the service will be lost and in that scenario we will break the old feature of the application. To handle this type of scenarios in ASP.NET Core we have few methods. We have three new methods in the same container try add scoped, try add singleton and try add transient.
If we are registering the service by using any of these methods, add scoped, add singleton, or add transient, then they will simply replace the service in the collection if it has already been registered in the container. To handle the situation, we have to use these methods. Now, if we use the try version of this method, like try add scoped, or try add singleton, or try add transient, then it will only register the service if it was not registered earlier. In case service was already registered, then this method, the try version, will skip the registration for that service. If instead of using this add transient, we are using try add transient, like this. Let's use the namespace. Now what will happen? The registration of this service will work for the first time because at this line there is no registration for this i product repository. But if you will try to register this service again by using this add transient service method, then this add transient method will skip the registration. Why? Because it has already been registered. So the simple concept is that if you are using this try add transient, then for the first time if there is no registration of the service, then it will work simply and it will register the service. But if you are trying to register the same interface with some other service in the application, then this try version of this method will simply skip the registration. Let's verify this concept. So here you can see first we have registered the test repository and second we have used the product repository. And this time because we are using the try version then this registration will not work and we will get our data from this test repository. Let's run this application. Open the postman, hit the send button and here in the output you can see that we are getting the data from this test repository. This is how you can use the try version of these methods. This try version of the method is applicable for all three methods. We can use try add transient, we can use try add singleton, here is try add singleton or we can also use try add scope. So for all these three methods you can use the try version and you can remove the problem of getting overridden.